Hey there, I gotta go there one more time. Listen, I just finished watching some of these videos about uh, by other homosexual guys about the Bible. And it just finds, strikes me very funny that people that have rejected the Bible, don't believe in the Bible, and all of a sudden becomes experts in the Bible when it comes to this stuff. And you're spreading information about the Bible and really what I call well-crafted lies because some of it is just plain untruth. Either you're deceived or either you're, you're intentionally deceiving or you are deceived. The one guy said that Sodom and Gomorrah had nothing to do with gay. I don't know what Bible you read from or what God you are talking about because it says specifically in the Bible and I had looked it up earlier, but I don't know where it is. It's Genesis something. You know, look under where it said Lot. The men had, the, the angels of God had come down to, he smelled the stench. It says this. Here's the story, okay? He smelled the stench of, of the sin that was coming. God, the sin was rising up to the throne of God and was a stench in his nostrils. And he heard the screams of, uh, uh, the, the wailings, the sufferings of some of the sins. Now, I don't know what all that means. Okay, let's not be that ethereal about it. Okay, but basically, God came down to um, Abra uh, Abraham and uh, Sarah, his wife, who were infertile. And he promised them that you'll have a child. Just wait. Okay, so and then he said, I'm going down to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of uh, the wailings of the people, the sufferings of the people. That meant, you know, somebody who did know God was calling up to him and saying, help us, you know. And, and basically, uh, they went down and they said, they said, well, we're going to go check on the city to see if it's okay, what's going on there, if things are as bad as what we think it is. And so Abraham, now this is now, knowing his brother Lot is down there, he said, well, Lord, uh, and being concerned about the rest of the people, knowing the Lord is angry and he about to take them out for their sin, which he has a right to do because of sin. And sin don't have no respect. It will come right up to the throne of God and say, you are wrong. They'll call God a liar. Okay, so uh, which is untrue, you know, and so sin cannot be contained. It's like crack. It's like once you take a little, it's like an alcohol and alcoholism. If you take a little bit, then that'll be it. So anyway, uh, Abraham, this is the first time I think it's noted in the Bible that anybody ever talk, negotiated with God. Okay, and Abraham did it in such a way, and God loved Abraham so much. And Abraham, and I can see why, because he was so concerned about um, the Sodomites and Gomorrahs. I don't know if that's called. Abraham didn't want them all to get destroyed, and Abraham pleaded for them. Okay, and matter of fact, God gave them some opportunity. God, Abraham said to them. Uh, uh, said to God, and this was, he says, forgive me for venturing, but if there's 50 men down there, will you save the city? And God said, yes, it's, okay, if there's 50 guys down there, for the sake of 50 men, this is how concerned God was for the people, knowing that they were sinning. He said, if there's 50, if I find 50, okay, I'm not going to destroy the city, you know? And he said, Abraham said, well, sir, if I could venture one more time, if there's, if there's 40 people, and God says, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, 40. So it gets down to 10 people. And God says, all right, 10 people. All right, I'll not destroy the city for 10 people that are pure of heart, okay? And he goes to the city, and he finds out that there is none, none, not even 10 of pure heart. And he actually saves Lot for the sake of, you know, he tells Lot, look, there ain't nobody here. I ain't dealing with this. This They got to go. Okay. I'm evicting them. This is my land. This is my property. They might, you know, I created everything. They got to go. Okay. So, so 
In the midst of this, the men of the city sees Lot with these uh, uh, other men. And they said the men uh, took a lot of time. I don't know what it said. I didn't read the whole part. But basically, they said, and I forgot the scripture, and I just posted it, and said, tell the men, the men were out there, and they said, tell those men, Lot, where's the men you were with? Tell them to come out here so that we can get to know them. So we can have relations with them. So the men were homosexual men and wanted to rape these other men, men of God or angels, sons of uh, sons of men, angels. So it was literally these dudes were so corrupt that they wanted to actually rape angels. OK, that's where the story is. And even then, Lot said to them, no, do not do harm to these men and do not do harm. Now, I don't care how you, some people say strangers, it was just a thing about how to treat strangers. No, it was about homosexuality and these men wanting to rape these men. And, and so, okay. So Lot said to them, okay, wait a minute. Look, I got two beautiful daughters and they're virgins. You can have them. This is what Lot did. Lot literally sacrificed his daughters so that these men would not attack these angels, uh, men of God, or these sons of God, you know? And so he was willing to sacrifice his daughter, and these men did not want the women. They wanted to rape the men. And so they came to Lot. They said, now, if you don't send them out here right now, we gonna rape you. And then that's when, that's how corrupt, and that's how far gone that these men were. They had no affection for what God had provided for them. God who has provided clean air, who has land, who has provided water, who has provided everything, food for us, who has provided women for men. They told him that we don't even want that. We're going to violate another man. And so... So, uh, so at that point, they said, also said, if you don't send them out, we will rape you. Basically, they said that's a lot. So that's the story. So for you guys trying to say that Sodom and Gomorrah was something about something else, you're a damn lie. Excuse me, but you're lying, you know? So, and that's the problem I, you know, what gets me again is this abrupt disconnect this completely jumped the tracks of the, the train of thought, just completely jumped the tracks. You don't know the Bible. If you did know the Bible, you wouldn't be talking all this crap, you know? And you don't have respect for the Bible. That's what the thing that gets me. You, you want everybody to have respect for you, but you won't have respect for anybody else's belief. And all of a sudden, everything is new because you got on the scene. And going to change everything that has been keeping society glued together. Now you want to wrap it just for your sake. And then you say that you are doing it for love. You're saying you're doing it for love, and which is sex. You know, because every just because you have a sex with somebody or any kind of form, it don't mean that it is love. So then you say you're having it for love, but then you talk about the economic benefits. Well, we really just want finance. We want this. We want that. You know, which is it? You know, you say, oh, it's about the finances and all that stuff. You know, and quite simply, again, you know, to say that it's not going to affect children and stuff like that. Now, we went from, you know, we went from, hey, it's okay you know, we're not going discri not gonna to discriminate. And I'm not saying we in general. It goes from, you know what? You know, we're not judging you. You know, okay, everybody got their ways and stuff like that. Till you come in and saying, I can't be happy. And you're talking about you're so gay and happy. But then you're saying, and, and you got your partner. But how, how is your happiness so, so dependent on being married? You mean to tell me you can't be happy with the person you're with unless you're married? That's a new one. Because <laughs> there's a lot of married people that are unmarried people that are very happy and they're not considering marriage. You know, you can't even talk them into marriage. You know? 
And then you turn around and say that, that that is about your happiness and it's about love. Where's the love? Not so. It's not about love. What it really is 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 you know it's wrong and you want it to be okay and you want God to say it's okay and you want everybody else to say it's okay. That's what it's about. Is that you feel that guilt and that guilt will not go away once you get married. Because you will still know in your mind, heart, body, and soul that it is not right. You know what? Quite honestly, personally, you know, to put so much emphasis on sex, I believe is wrong. You know, to say that, oh, I got to be married to be happy. That means like you can't even stand to be by yourself. And see, that's what I really have a problem with, too, because, you know what, to be a well-rounded whole person ain't got the nothing to do with somebody else. You could be a well-rounded whole person without being married, without having another person in your life. It's people that do it all the time, people that are celibate. And your whole thing is revolving around sex, you know?